everyone welcome to my channel so today I want to talk about preserving your colored pages quite a few of you have asked how I preserve my colored pages um, and it's actually quite simple a long time ago I started using this Krylon workable fixative now I know that there are a lot of other fixatives out there, a lot of other brands. So I'm gonna tell you right now that I can't speak for any other brand and I'm not, you know, getting paid by Krylon to do this video or anything. I'm just telling you all uh, what I do and what works for me. So um, I use this Krylon workable fixative. I know it says workable. I never go back really to rework in my pages after I've sprayed this because personally I don't like the grittiness that it leaves um, on your paper, uh, the feel of going back over with my pencil work on that. So like I said, I just use this once I have finished everything and I use it to set my colors, especially if I've used pan pastel. You definitely want to use some kind of a fixative after using pan pastel. I don't use pan pastel very often, but when I do, I definitely use the fixative. But what I mostly use this for are colored pages. So colored pencil work, watercolor work, you know, all of the usual mediums that I use for my colored pages. So uh, this helps set the medium, uh, the colored pencil work, uh, or whatever you use, and uh, prevents it from transferring light to the opposite page if you haven't colored it, or if you have colored it, you definitely don't want to mess up your artwork on the opposite page. Okay, and then I have also had uh, some people ask uh, how my pages are shiny after I've finished coloring them, and I, I believe it is um, due, partially due to the Krylon fixative, but also I heavily burnish and blend my colored pencil, so that's another reason why my page ends up looking shiny. But I'm gonna grab my um, jewelry box book here. And uh, this was a recent page that I, that I did, uh, many of you saw back in October. And you can kind of see how it's kind of shiny there. And I'm pretty sure now it's not shiny where the background is, where I had uh, laid down that Neo color, but it's shi it is shiny on the pencil work. So, like I said, I think most of that might be due to me, you know, burnishing and really blending in that pencil work, but partially due to the fixative. Now, here's what I wanna show you too. When you go to spray the fixative, um, you do need to do just a little bit of prep work I always take a scratch, uh, scrap sheet of paper and cover up the opposite page. Even if it has uh, already finished artwork on there, I just don't wanna get any overspray. You wanna be careful not to get overspray on the opposite page, but especially with a page that you haven't colored in yet because it will affect the paper and what you're going to do on this page down the road. So what I like to do is just take a scratch sheet of paper and then basically just, you know, lay it over the top. If it's not windy outside, then you won't have to worry about the wind blowing it. And yes, I take my whole uh, book outside and uh, spray the page because obviously you definitely want to spray this outside where you've got good ventilation and not in an enclosed room. And I'll take you outside uh, and we'll do, I'll do a demonstration. Now, but yes, you definitely want to cover up the opposite side because I have had instances where maybe I didn't cover up 
uh, the other page. Then when I go to work in the page, like um, watercolor, if you're doing a watercolor background, it will not have the kind of effect that you are looking for. It will definitely kind of mess up uh, the watercolor effect and any kind of a water medium, it almost acts as a resist. So you can't get good coverage with a watercolor medium if you get overspray on the opposite page. So just a heads up with that. And yeah, so I'm gonna take you outside and do a little demonstration. I kinda wanna show you how far away to hold the can and just so you can kinda see how I usually do this process. All right, so we're out in our uh, backyard on the patio here. There's uh, not a lot of wind and it's a nice day, so perfect. Uh, day for doing this. I just laid down an old towel from our garage. This is our um, kind of um, fire uh, table that we have in our uh, patio here. Anyway, so I just laid down this uh, towel because the um, table cover here is kind of dingy and dirty and I don't want to get my book dirty. So um, we'll just open it up to the page. Um, this was a page that I recently did from this Molly Harrison book, Big Book of Halloween and Autumn. And I haven't had a chance to seal it yet. Um, this one I probably don't really have to seal, but definitely like the Hannah Carlson and um, like Johanna Basford and those other books I definitely would seal. So I am going to, and also, oh, one thing before I forget, um, you, if, like I was saying before, if uh, you have another page on the opposite side and you haven't colored it, or even if you have colored it, take your scratch piece of paper and just cover it up. Now, if the wind is blowing a little bit, you might want to put some paper clips and paper clip it down. But essentially, what I do is take my fixative, give it a good shake. Now, I definitely recommend reading the directions on the back uh, so that you have an idea of, you know, the, the preferred method for using it. Um, so take off the cap. The so basically, yeah, uh, six inches to a foot away is usually what I do. And just do a light mist over the whole page Okay, because one thing that I mentioned before in one of my other videos, you definitely want to make sure that you do not saturate the page with the spray. If you oversaturate the page, then your color, of course this is alcohol marker, but your color, even if it's pencil work, will seep through because, it's, because the paper is saturated. So definitely keep that in mind. So we'll shake it up here and then just, I'm gonna hold it down here on the corner because there is a little bit of a breeze. And just do a light mist back and forth, just like that, and that's it, okay? You do not wanna oversaturate the page, but you wanna give it a good, even coating. All right, so then what I usually do is I leave it outside to dry um, and you want those fumes to kind of evaporate off as well because you don't want to bring it into the house when it's, you know, got all those stinky fumes. So it does say dries in 10 to 15 minutes and handle after an hour. But what I usually do is I will let it dry. Um, trying to get something to hold it down there, but I will leave it outside and I set my timer because otherwise I've been known to forget it outside. So you don't want to do that. Set your timer for 20 minutes or so, and then just bring it back inside, but don't close it up. So um, you want to bring it back inside just after those fumes have um, dissipated and leave it open and let it set inside then for another couple hours uh, before you close the book up. That way it for sure doesn't transfer onto the other side. All right, so let's go back in. All right, so we're back inside. Uh, the timer was set for 20 minutes and it sat out there for 20 minutes to air out. Um, and so it is, it is dry, 
But like I said, I like to just kind of um, set it off to the side somewhere where it's not going to get disturbed for another hour or two. Uh, just to make sure that it is completely dry. And you can see that it did kind of make the page a little bit shiny. I don't know if it's if it's picking up there. But yeah, it did make the page a little bit shiny, which I'm totally fine with. And there was no bleed through um, other than what I had used uh, on for this page uh, for the base layer was my alcohol markers. So it's just the alcohol marker and then these spots were from where I had uh, laid down my water droplets over top of the uh, distress ink background. So there was no additional bleed through and this is really thin paper too. This is that Amazon paper um, and so it worked just fine with that. So yeah, that's how I preserve my papers. And uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments um, or if you have a product that you like to use. I, I'm always willing to try new products. I know there's a Windsor & Newton brand um, and then there's another brand I can't think of the name right now. I just saw it at Michael's. Anyway, um, but, uh, yeah, let me know if you have a way that you like to preserve your papers that works for you. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and got some good tips out of it and we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.